What's up, guys? Larry the Mortgage Guy here, your Mortgage Insider. And uh, I wanted to touch upon a topic that uh, I explain a lot to of my friends and family and, of course, new, uh, new home buyers, right? So I did actually make an official video. It's, it's very stiff, right? Uh, I took a lot of different versions and clips and I put them together. And, uh, you know, again, being your Mortgage Insider, my goal is to be your friend. My goal is to be your confidant your uh, you know your, your, your backup your insider right so I want to make it a little bit more uh, informal you know now excuse what I'm wearing suit and tie I just came from uh, you know, I guess you can call it an interview people are trying to recruit me uh, and you know obviously if my boss found out or knew about this it'd be bad but the thing is uh, if he was asking why were you doing that I'll tell him well, number one uh, I always hear person out right that's how I ended up in the business anyways number one number two uh, I want to know about my competition I want to know what they're doing what they're offering right so if someone was to mention the company that uh, tried to recruit me I know what what their inside uh, information is I know what they can offer I know uh, literally you know their product mix and such so it, it kind of gives me an opportunity to know the business a little bit more okay but anyways Back to the topic at hand. So sorry, I, I usually will be dressed more casually, okay? Um, Pre-qualification and pre-approval. People kind of throw these uh, terms interchangeably. It's not the same thing. Y you know, it is it is semantics, right? I mean, some branches or, or, or lenders or banks are going to use uh, one term for another. Uh, but essentially, there's two different levels, okay? And that's how you really should think about it. So just think level A and level B. Uh, for for this purpose, and you know, for most general purposes, you'll find out that level A, meaning the first level, is going to be a pre-qualification. So for the rest of this video, that's what I'm going to talk about: the pre-qualification being A, and for B, think pre-approval. Okay, so qualification and approval. What's the difference? Well. The way I was trained and the way I actually do my business and the way you'll find a lot of different business, uh, businesses do business. And you can look this up. There's a lot of different resources like Investopia uh, and I think like maybe like the Realtor.com or whatever. There's some sites out there that will support exactly how I am uh, translating this, okay? A pre-qualification is an initial review of your credit. They're going to take, do a hard inquiry, look at your credit scores, right? They're going to see what you're working with in terms of your debts, right? They're going to see if there's anything crazy. Uh, like um, you know, uh, judgments or bankruptcies or foreclosures, uh, they need to know this information. Okay, uh, th those things uh, will stop alone. Okay, so they they need to look this up and you find out what's going on. Uh, and it's, if it's not on your credit report, you know, then ninety nine percent of the time you're good. But if it's it, if it is, we got to deal with it right away. We got to we got to manage it. We got to uh, you know take the bull by the horns and, and figure out what we need to do in terms of that particular uh, you know line on your credit report right so it's an initial review of your credit your credit scores your credit history your debts things of that nature uh, we also usually take stated information information about you your work history uh, you know whether you have one year two year five years whatever we need to know about your income how are you getting paid are you getting paid hourly are you getting paid uh, salary are you getting paid commission is it per project are you a temporary employee or not uh, you know we kind of get all the it's like it's like dating right we're trying to find out all the vital statistics about you to see if you're a good mate if you're someone that we, we believe that we can we, we'd be willing to date right so that's that's really what a pre-qualification is um, you know other uh, all organizations do it differently but uh, it's basically looking at your credit information see if there's anything crazy going on and taking your state information and kind of doing the the calculations of your ability to repay, uh, which of course involves your debt to income ratio, uh, DTI, right? It involves, of course, your scores. Depending on your scores, uh, with certain guidelines and certain products out there with the investors. When I say investors, I'm talking about Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Jeannie Mae, and others. Uh, you know, they, they give you a certain amount of debt to income ratio to play with when it, term, when it comes to buying a home, right? Uh, essentially, how much of your income can be used towards buying a home? 
do you have a lot of debt? So that that shrinks the amount of home you can buy. If you have, don't have much debt, but you have a lot of income, then you can buy more home. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, fractions and math and division, whatever, right? Um, but but essentially that's what a pre-qualification is. We we find out if, if everything looks good credit wise. If it does, well, how much can you borrow? You know, based on the state information, what you told me, what I had to trust you to give me uh, accurately, I try to figure out how much home you can buy. That's a pre-qualification. And uh, you know, you use that to kind of know if you can move forward with the process or you need to stop and, and kind of reassess, right? So that's what a pre-qualification is. Some people want a pre-qualification so they can know where they stand, so they can you know make decisions. Some people want a pre-qualification because they want to start looking at a house right away. You know, the truth of the matter is you probably should not do that until you actually get officially pre-approved, which of course is going to be the B level versus the A level, right? Uh, and I don't know if I, I maybe I should have made that backwards, but you know, A, because A usually associated with the best, but in reality, A just means a, initial, right? Initial review of your credit information, whereas a pre-approval is a more thorough. Now, I'm going to explain to you what a pre-approval is versus a pre pre-qualification. And once you hear what a pre-approval is, uh, you'll know why it's different from a pre-qualification, uh, pre okay? So with a pre-approval, first of all, we need the pre-qualification. We need to know if credit looks good and what you're telling me sounds sounds good, right? If that all works out, then I move on to the next step and it gets a little more intimate. Like I said, it's like dating, right? So now, instead of just asking you, you know, how much do you make, now I need to know. I need to look at your pay stubs at least 30 days. Uh, you know, I need to get W-2s. Uh, so I know how much you made last year. You know, what did you clock in at? Uh, I need to look at your tax paperwork because the taxes pretty much kind of, you know, tells us what it is that you made last year. Uh, do you have any write-offs? You know, are you running a business where you're making 100000 but you lost 50000 because you wrote off $50,000 worth of losses? I mean, there's lots of information I need to take a look at. So I can calculate your income. Okay. And again, income is very important. It's your DTI is what determines how much you can borrow. So I need to know exactly what your income is pretty much to the penny, right? Or at least that's the effort. That's what we're trying to accomplish is get it to the penny, right? So I'm going to ask you for this, this information. Like I said, pay stubs, W-2s, tax paperwork, okay? Uh, I'm also going to ask you for bank statements. Why am I asking for bank statements? I need to know that you have funds to close. I need to know that you have down payment. Right, uh, and you know, is there anything crazy going on uh, with your income, or you know, whatever? I mean, are you, uh, you know, uh, do you have like obligations that uh, might affect your ability to repay? Right, and I know it sounds crazy that I'm asking for your bank statements, but I'm telling you, it's it's part of the law. Okay, uh, rule of thumb when it comes to loan officers, and 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 this is something that you know, hopefully, uh, every loan officer can appreciate when I when I tell you this. We would never ask you for something that we want. And I say never, just in a general way. Maybe there's people who do want. I don't ask you for something I want. I only ask you for something that I need, okay? Because I have so many files going on anyways. I have so many pages of documents going on anyways. I don't want to read more, okay? So when you when I ask you for something, I'm asking you for something that I have to read. And in reality, I'd only ask for it if I really need it, okay? So if I'm asking you for a base statement, please just trust me enough or trust the loan officer enough to give it to them because they need it. Now, if you don't want to give up, if you don't want to give up base statement information, well, you got to have some sort of way of proving that you're going to have source to close, okay? So uh, no matter what, uh, just be ready to provide the information, okay? Uh, yes, you might be able to do loans without it. Uh, not in my experience, right? Uh, but yes, be prepared to give me base statements, okay, in the last 60 days, right? Why 60 days? Because we have to look at this last 60 days of deposit because we need to make sure you're not funneling a bunch of cash in there, right? I mean, who knows? What if, what if you, you know, you're a drug dealer, right? Or what if you're, uh, you know, you're in the mafia or something, right? Uh, you know, I, I need to make sure that, you know, that money is legit. So it has to be sourced is what they call it, right? So if last 60 days you have a bunch of crazy deposits, you we can't source the funds. You're not. You're not going to get a loan. Okay. Now, if you have 60 days worth of uh, pay statements and you know everything looks normal, you know it looks like your deposit coming from your your job, uh, and you have the funds to close. Well, then you know this is not a big deal. And your base statements uh, say say exactly what we wanted to say. We, it says that you have the money to put money, money down, and you don't have any unsourced funds. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna ask you for a few more, you know, like I'm gonna ask for your ID, ask for your social security number to make sure that, no, social security card, not the number, to make sure that everything looks right, everything's spelled right. You know, your credit report must match your social security card, so that's why I need to look at that as well. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, but based on that, I can calculate true income and I need, and I know you are who you say you are, 
right? Um, we might do like a title search, make sure that there's no foreclosures or, or, or you know, any weird divorce type situations going on where that might stop the loan and underwriting because that'd be the worst if you have a contract on a home and you're purchasing a home and we find something crazy. It's happened to me before, okay? If you find something crazy in your past history, that's going to stop the loan, right? So we, we try to get as much information. It's, it's almost like getting pre-underwritten. You get underwritten before you even have a house, okay? Um, but yeah, that's what a pre-approval is. Once we get all that and we have your debt to income ratio, perfect and we know your scores are, are perfect you have no red flags going on you don't owe anything to the uh, to the government that you, you're not taking care of then we are confident in giving you a letter that says yes mr or mrs customer can buy a house at this amount go ahead and take their offer if they make one that's basically what a pre-approval it's a letter that confirmed that we looked at your documents we did the math we we even verified your employment in in some cases if we need to this person can borrow this much. Go ahead and accept their offer. That's what a pre-approval is, okay? So, difference between pre-qualification and pre-approval. Pre-qualification, I'm kind of taking your word for it, and I'm just looking at your credit. That's basically it. You're telling me you're making $100,000 a year. I'm trusting you, Mr. Customer. I'm going to do the math based on that, okay? Okay, if you make $100,000 a year, you can borrow this much. It's all state information, okay? But... Uh, whenever I look at your documents, I might find out that you're actually only making $85,000 a year because you didn't consider the fact that you wrote $15,000 off in losses or you didn't consider this or whatever, right? So, stated information versus confirmed information. So, if you want to know the difference, pre-qualification is uh, kind of a guess based on information that you gave me. A pre-approval is there's no guessing. We looked at everything. We calculated the math. We, did, we made sure it was accurate. And it's pretty much as solid as it can be in terms of knowing what kind of borrower you are. That's a pre-approval, okay? And essentially, at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. How are you going to get this home? How are you going to make an offer and get a contract? You need to have something that proves that you can buy the home. And that's what a pre-approval is. A pre-qualification can not do. I mean, if, if someone accepts your offer uh, based on a pre-qualification, you probably should question the intelligence of that person and maybe even the validity of the home and the offer and the whole nine, right? But if a person demands a pre-approval then they're uh, they're well informed and they're not going to mess around with bs they want a serious buyer so that's the whole point of a pre-approval okay hopefully that answers a lot of questions that you may have i'm going to have that video that i made i'm going to post it on here so that you can kind of refer reference to that but again to me that was very stiff it was designed to kind of you know market myself a little bit and you know help people out but in reality it's not really inside information it's just you know i'm just talking Right, whereas this one, I'm trying to talk to you like a friend, like a confidant, like an acquaintance, someone that you know you you know have dinner with, hopefully someday, right? Uh, but hopefully that information helps. Like I said, uh, you had a question, you can always call me. I would love it if you hired me. If you didn't, that's okay. You still benefit from the conversation, right? Hopefully. Uh, but if you if you do want to hire me, you want to have any questions or whatever, you can call me eight three two six zero six two one nine three. You can email me at lawrence l a w r e n c e dot lee l e at nationslending dot com n a t I O N S L E N D I N G dot com. Uh, Lawrence dot Lee at nationlending.com. Uh, hopefully, you do reach out to me. Uh, if you don't, then okay, no problem. Good luck and happy house hunting. Okay. Larry the Mortgage Guy out. Oh, and I'm also, again, Larry the Mortgage Guy, your mortgage insider. I'm going to get that right eventually. <laughs>what's up guys it's larry the mortgage guy your mortgage insider uh, excuse the get up i just came from an open house with a couple of realtors i'm working with uh, but i want to give a quick disclaimer uh, i don't know everything and i don't pretend to know everything a lot of the information i'm giving you is based off of memory what i've researched or training or what i've read right uh, so it's always subject to change or be inaccurate so if you do find something that i say that's inaccurate or non-compliant please let me know i would appreciate the opportunity to fix it and of course uh, speak about it in future videos uh, you know my job as a licensed professional is to give you the best information possible and protect you as the borrower uh, you know they call it uh, commanding the confidence of the community right so i want to be that guy so please if you have any uh, suggestions or questions or something that i'm doing that's incorrect please let me know and i would love to uh, have an opportunity to correct that uh, this is larry the mortgage guy uh, your mortgage insider i'm out